Hey guys, welcome to Stock Steps, and uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate um, the RSI uh, in Excel or some kind of spreadsheet program. So here, um, under price action, I have plotted Wilder's RSI. Um, there's, I guess, like several variations for RSI, but the Wilder's one, uh, you know, is a classic one. It's basically the one that you will find on Yahoo Finances or most uh, charting software. And uh, it's basically an oscillator, a sensor relative strength index, and it oscillates from 0 to 100, as you can see here. Um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, showing the overbought, oversold, overbought being above 70, oversold being under 30, or at least based upon, um, I guess, the sort of the, the definitions and, uh, uh, and also momentum as uh, a sort of a, a general increase is thought to be uh, predictive of further excursion in that direction. So to calculate it, um, first, we have to uh, get some security prices. So I'm gonna look for the ETF of the S&P 500, and uh, go ahead and just get the price and uh, download to the spreadsheet. <clears throat> okay, let's go open this up, and uh, probably we can get rid of uh, the volume and adjust the close. Um, we can probably also get rid of open high low. Um, leaving just a date and a closing price. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this, and then I'm gonna sort um, oldest to newest. So that way, as we're moving down, we're going forward in time. Okay. So the first uh, thing to do um, to calculate RSI is to find the change, right? So okay. So essentially, the change of the closing price, uh, you can sort of think of as um, you know just B3 minus B2. And uh, if the closing price went up, this will return a positive value. Uh, if it went down, it will return a negative value, as in the case of here. And sometimes it actually, uh, uh, you know, the close of a bar is exactly where it closed the bar ago. So in this case, you will return zero, right? And then um, after change, you can essentially uh, calculate a gain and, and also loss. And so a gain is um, essentially if the change uh, was positive, right? So we're going to do an if-then statement. So um, I guess like if, uh, oops, sorry, I have two ifs. Um, if uh, C3 uh, uh, is uh, essentially greater than zero, so that is to say it's not zero, uh, it's not less than zero, it's greater than zero, we're gonna return the value of C3, which is we're gonna just return that value or we're gonna return zero. Um, and then we're gonna close parentheses and we can go ahead and extend this down. And so as you can see, every time there's um, a positive uh, value, we're just going to return the same exact value um, and just kind of copy it uh, to this column here. And then we're going to do uh, something kind of similar uh, to the to the, uh, to the losses, right? That is to say, if the, we actually had a uh, close lower than a bar ago, um, if that was the case, then um, it would be true that C3 or whatever C value is um, would be uh, uh, essentially less than zero. If that is the case, we're going to return the absolute value of uh, C3. Um, else, we're going to return 0. And we're going to go ahead and extend this down. As you can see, whenever there was like a negative value, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, return. Um, return uh, uh, we're going to flip this positive and we're going to return the positive value. So um, you can do that a number of ways. I choose to use an absolute value. Okay, and then you can do uh, something called average uh, gain and then average uh, loss. And uh, that's where the, the calculation period comes in. Um, I think the standard, um, I guess, uh, classic setting uh, for the uh, Wilder RSI uh, is, as you can see, a 14 period, but you can, of course, do a more sensitive one, like a five period, or a less sensitive one, like a 20 period, 50 period. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep it at 14 period. Um, what this means is that we're just going to essentially average it out using a, 50, uh, a 14 uh, essentially look back period. So since uh, row uh, 1 is the header and row 2 we don't have anything for gains and losses, that means we have to start on, I believe, the 16th. And then we're just going to, uh, for the first value, we're going to just do a simple um, moving average. Um, or I guess average since it's not really moving. Yeah, it's, let's just be sure it's 14. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. So that's going to be uh, the average game. And then we're going to drive this over. And as you can see, that's the average loss. So um, so for the average game, 
essentially we're going to um, uh, uh, for every subsequential period we're going to essentially find um, uh, um, we're going we're gonna to take 13 um, which is basically 14 minus 1 right so 13 I'm going to times uh, by uh, I guess where it was um, a last period so the average last period and then we're going to add in um, the chain from this period so D17 right so we're going to take the most recent um, uh, gain we're going to uh, we're going to add it to 13 times uh, the gain from before and then we're going to divide it by 14 and that's going to give us um, the new value for the average gain and we're going to do the same exact thing for the average loss so we're going to take 13 times uh, where, where it was um, a period ago which is um, G16 plus uh, the, the most recent one which is E17 right? so, the, so the most recent one added to 13 times the previous one so um, and then we're going to go ahead and divide it by 14 again and uh, that's um, how they calculate average um, loss and average gain and then and then we can calculate um, from this we can calculate something called a relative strength and what the relative strength is um, it's essentially a, a, a ratio right so um, we're gonna take basically um, F 16 divided by G 16 and it's gonna return a ratio and if this ratio um, is less than uh, 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 one then essentially what it means is that the average loss um, for this particular period uh, is greater than the average gain and if it is a case that it's greater than one then that means the average gain was greater than the average loss so you can sort of think of it as in like either downtrending or uptrending I guess and then from here we can uh, go ahead and calculate the RSI uh, from the relative strength and all the RSI is is essentially um, normalizing the relative strength so that it oscillates um, between 0 and 100 no matter what and uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to um, do equals 100 divided by, um, no, sorry, 100 uh, minus uh, parentheses, 100 divided by another parentheses um, in, plus, uh, uh, in plus 1. Um, so in this case, uh, we have H uh, 16 plus 1. And then we're going to close that parentheses. And then we're going to go ahead and drag this down. And uh, what this allows you to do is that even if you have like let's say an arbitrarily small number, like 0 0.00001, um, or I guess like um, even smaller than that, zero, it's essentially I'm going to ask them to toward zero, uh, even if you have like the smallest number in the world, and also if you have a very large number, let's say nine 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 nine, all it's essentially going to converge to a hundred. Um, I think that's too many nines, but you get the idea. It's going to be um, it's basically going to oscillate. Uh, between um, um, uh, uh, 0 and 100 um, because uh, a relative strength cannot be um, um, a, a negative number because it was taken as a, as a, as a ratio of two positive numbers um, and, uh, and even if it goes up to like um, a really large number um, uh, essentially the, the RSI uh, would, would uh, only ask them to toward 100 so it oscillates between uh, 0 and 100 and, uh, and then let's go ahead and uh, spot check our work to see how we did it correctly. Okay, so on 513 2006, um, the classic definition of RSI, uh, which is to say Wilder's RSI uh, on our charting software, return a value of 4465, return a value of 4465382. I think that's too many decimal places. Let's pop back a few decimal places. Okay, 4465, so we turn the same exact value. Um, Spot check another instance on 422. RSI uh, on my charting software returned a value of 6307. So that's the, sec uh, the 22nd of, uh, uh, of April. And then um, on my uh, charting software, uh, or sorry, on my calculation, return the same value uh, 6307, uh, 6307. So yeah, so that's how you calculate, um, I guess, classical um, RSI. And uh, all it is is essentially a ratio um, of the absolute value of some kind of a, a, a average gain uh, divided by um, essentially uh, um, the average loss, and then you get essentially um, an average gain over average loss ratio. And um, you know when you when you normalize this um, over a hundred or really any kind of um, I guess uh, a, a, a change in the relative uh, strength between average gain or average loss or any any change. Uh, I, I guess any any indicator that tries to measure um, the change in 
uh, the rate of change is, of course, going to you know um, uh, uh, be trying to measure uh, momentum, and so that's the intuition behind um, the RSI. Uh, thanks for watching.